In today's note, we are going to look at solving quadratic equations. So the goal of solving quadratic equations is to basically find solutions to a quadratic equation where the values of x cross the x-axis. Right, so we're basically looking for where the graph crosses the x-axis or we're trying to solve when y equals 0. So looking at this quadratic here, we can see we have two solutions at negative 3 and 4. So in other words, the solutions are known as the x-intercepts, which are also known as the roots or the zeros. So basically, that's what we're trying to find when we're solving a quadratic equation. So the solutions to a quadratic equation, ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, are the x-intercepts for that quadratic equation. And there are three possible results you could have when solving a quadratic equation. So one possibility is you have two distinct real roots. So that would mean if you have, say, let's draw two examples. If you have a quadratic that looks something like this, because it will cross the x-axis twice there, or let's say it looks something like this, where you cross the x-axis twice in two different locations. Another option is you have two equal real roots. And what that means, if we quickly draw it, that means I would have something like this, where the only time it touches the x-axis is at the vertex. So that means my vertex is on the x-axis. The third situation, if I have no real roots, it would look like this, where the vertex is above the x-axis and it opens up. Or, let me just change this up. Say something like this, where it's the vertex is below the x-axis and it opens down. So those are the three situations that we could have. So what we're going to do, or the first method to solving quadratic equations, is factoring. So we're going to look at how to solve quadratic equations by factoring. And just as a review, we want to think about if two numbers have a product of 0, what must be true about one or both of the numbers? Or in other words, if a times b equals 0, what must be true about the value of a or b or both? And if you think about it, what's the only way we can get 0 when we multiply two numbers? And the only way we can get 0 by multiplying two numbers is if a equals 0, or b equals 0, or both equals 0. So that's the only situation, or those are the only ways that we can get 0. And it has to be one of those scenarios. So that's going to help us in solving our quadratic equation. Again, because we're solving by factoring, um, you are going to need to have a knowledge of factoring. Um, I would suggest if you um, kind of forget or you need a refresher, go back and look at the factoring lessons. So in our first example, it's already factored for us, so we're just going to start with the basics. If I want to solve this expression for when it equals 0, that means I need to set both brackets equal to 0. Right? Again, just talking about mention, or with what we just mentioned, one of those brackets or both of them have to equal 0. So the only way this works is if x minus 3 equals 0 or if x plus 5 equals 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and solve each of these separately. So x minus 3 equals 0, move the minus 3 over, it becomes plus 3 there's one solution. x plus 5 equals 0, move 1 over, or move the plus 5 over, it becomes minus 5. So x equals negative 5 is a second solution. And if I want to check my answers, I can take each of those solutions, plug them back in one at a time, and check to see if they equal 0. So in the first one, 3 minus 3 times 3 plus 5 equals 0. 
I get 0 times 8 equals 0 or 0 equals 0. So that works for the first solution. For the second solution, negative 5 minus 3 times negative 5 plus 5 equals 0. Negative 8 times 0 equals 0 or 0 equals 0. Left side equals right side. So both of these solutions work. We're going to continue on with kind of these simple examples just to again at least get comfortable with the idea of setting each fraction or sorry each factor equal to 0. So in my first example, x plus 2 times x plus 9 equals 0. In order for this to work, one or both of the factors has to equal 0. So I'm going to set each bracket equal to 0 and then solve. In this case, x plus 2 equals 0. Move the plus 2 over, it becomes minus 2. So x equals negative 2 is one solution. Same thing on the other side, move the plus 9 over, it becomes minus 9. x equals negative 9 is another solution. Again, I can check this by plugging both values back into the equation and checking to see if they equal 0. So I get 0 times 7 equals 0, 0 equals 0, so the first solution works. The next solution, negative 9 plus 2 times negative 9 plus 9 should equal 0. Negative 7 times 0 equals 0, or 0 equals 0. So again, both solutions work in this case. For example B, even though my frat factors or my two brackets look slightly different, it's still going to be the same step, or same steps. I'm going to set each equal to 0. So 2x plus 5 equals 0, 3x minus 4 equals 0, and I'm going to solve each one for x. So in this case, these are now two-step equations. Move the plus 5 over, it becomes minus 5. Divide both sides by 2, I get x equals negative 5 over 2. And that's one solution. Next example, or the, sorry, the next factor, move the minus 4 over, I get 3x equals positive 4, divide both sides by 3, I get x equals 4 over 3. This is my second solution. So these are my two solutions for this equation. Again, I could plug these back in and solve, and I should get 0 for each one. Now we're going to move into where we have to actually factor. So again, if, if you need that refresher on factoring, please go back and look at the factoring lessons or the factoring summary specifically um, that goes over all the different forms that you may see because all of those forms are applicable. So if I want to solve by factoring, the first thing I need to do is it needs to, or I need to make sure my equation is in standard form. So I need to be ax squared plus bx plus c, and everything needs to be to one side. Again, it's okay if we, if we have the one side equaling zero like we see in the first example, because again, the goal for solving is basically saying, what does x equal when y equals zero? Right, or again, we're looking for those x-intercepts, so that means that y value is going to be zero. So if I look at the first example, it's already put into that standard form, so now I need to factor. And again, this is where the factoring knowledge comes into play. I can see that it's a trinomial. The value in front of x, or the x squared, is 1, so it's got to be a simple trinomial. So that means I'm just going to use regular product and sum method. So I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 14, or the last number and two numbers that add to the middle number are 9. So these factors, again, you can use a multiplication table, you can think about it, trial and error, but we should get 7, oops, 7 and 2. And again, the reason for that is 7 times 2 equals 14, 
7 plus 2 equals 9. So because it is a simple trinomial, that means when I factor it, x is going to be the first term, one factor is going to be the second term, and in the second bracket it's just going to be x and then the other term or other factor that I haven't used already. I'm still setting them equal to 0 because I want to solve for when y equals 0. Now that I've factored it, I need to set each of those factors equal to 0, similar to what we were just doing with in the last couple examples. So x plus 7 equals 0, and x plus 2 equals 0. Now I need to solve. Move the plus 7 over, it becomes minus 7. Move the plus 2 over, it becomes minus 2. So there is my, sec my two solutions. Again, if you want, you can check your solutions by plugging them back in and seeing do they equal 0. So 0 times 9 equals 0, or 0 equals 0. So negative 7 is one solution. In the second one, negative 2 plus 7 times negative 2 plus 2 should equal 0. Negative 9 times 0 equals 0, or 0 equals 0. So again, these two solutions are correct. For b, b is a little different because I'm not in my standard form yet. So what I have to do, again remember, I want to get this into standard form. Move it over a bit. y equals a x squared plus bx plus c. So I need to get everything over to one side, because again, or in other words, sorry, a, 0 equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So I can do that. What I need to do now, again, is move everything over to one side. So this 8 has to move over to the left side. Um, you could move the other two terms over to the right side if you prefer, um, but it's a little bit easier, I think, to just move the one term over. So if I move the one term over, I'm going to move the 8 over, it becomes negative 8 on the other side, or minus 8. And because there's nothing left on the right side, I leave a placeholder of 0. So now this is in my standard form when y equals 0. So now I just have to work on factoring. Again, it's a trinomial. The value in front of x squared is not 1, so that means it's complex. And I can tell that it's not perfect squares because 3 is not a perfect square and neither is 8, or negative 8. So this means that I have to factor it as a complex trinomial. So again, you may have to review that, but the general method is I'm looking for a product of a times c, or the first number times the last number, 3 times negative 8, or negative 24. And then I'm looking for the same two numbers that have to add to negative 2. So if I look for my factors here, negative 24, they multiply to negative 24, they add to negative 2. If you think about it for a second, you should get negative 6 and positive 4. Because negative 6 plus 4 equals negative 2, and negative 6 times 4 equals negative 24. So those are my two values. We want to then use, or the next step in factoring this is to use decomposition. So I'm going to break up that middle term into the two terms that I've, or two factors that I found, minus 6x plus 4x. And now I want to factor by grouping. So if I factor the first two terms, I can factor out a 3x and get x minus 2. In the second term, I can factor out a positive 4 and be left with x minus 2 in the bracket as well, which is good because my goal is to make sure that I have the same bracket. Because now that's a common factor. So now again, continuing to factor, x minus 2 comes out, and the leftovers is my second bracket, 3x plus 4. And again, we can carry down that equals 0 all the way through. That doesn't really affect our factoring. Now that I have my two factors, 
I can set each equal to zero. and solve for x. So in the first case, I should get x equals 2. In the second case, move the plus 4 over, I get 3x equals negative 4. Divide both sides by 3, I get x equals negative 4 over 3. So these are my two x-intercepts, or my two solutions to this quadratic equation. If I wanted to, I could plug them back in and check, and I should find that in either case, I get zero. For C, 25x squared minus 9 equals zero. Even though this doesn't have that full form of ax squared plus bx plus c, it's still in that general form. I'm just missing the bx. That's fine, because that means then that the b value is zero, but it's still going to be in that form. I should still be able to factor it um, and get my two factors or my solutions. So I want to factor this, and again, looking at it, I should recognize that this is a difference of squares. And the reason is, is because if I f square root the first term, I get 5x. If I square root the last term, I get 3. So both of those numbers are perfect squares, and they're separated by a minus. Again, you might need a refresher on that, but again, you should be looking, whenever you're factoring, you should be looking for those key perfect squares, because those are, um, they tell us of some patterns that we can use that make it easier um, to factor. So because this is a perfect square trinomial, or sorry, a perfect, or a difference of squares, if I follow the pattern, it will be 5x plus 3 times 5x minus 3. So those are going to be my two factors. All right, so again, let's put difference of squares. So again, just remind yourself, or you maybe review that if you need to. So now that I factored it, I can set each bracket or each factor equal to zero, and I can solve. So 5x plus 3 equals zero. Move the plus 3 over. It becomes 5x equals negative 3. Divide both sides by 5. x equals negative 3 divided by 5. For the other bracket, move the minus 3 over. It becomes plus 3. Divide both sides by 5, I get x equals 3 over 5. And these are my two solutions to this equation. Again, if I wanted to, I can plug them back in. And, e and when I plug each solution back in, I should get um, the value of 0. So we're going to move on from that because, again, we could have multiple examples all with the different factoring types. But again, the steps aside from factoring are fairly similar. What we're going to look at now is a word or application question. So the path of a stone thrown into a ravine is modeled by the quadratic relation y equals negative x squared plus 5x plus 84, where x represents the distance in meters traveled horizontally and y represents the height in meters above the surface of the river at the bottom of the ravine. How far does the stone travel horizontally before it hits the water? So if I want to kind of draw this out, say here I have my ravine, my y-axis is going to be the height, my x-axis is going to be the horizontal distance at the bottom or at zero. I have my river and the stone is tossed off the cliff into the river. If I want to, just for some general information, just looking at this general equation or standard form, just because again it doesn't hurt to get an idea of what we're looking at, the two key pieces of our equation, this negative a value tells us it opens down, which is true when we're throwing something, it goes up and then comes down, so it's more of a 
um, it uh, it op or parabola opens down. And lastly, again, this 84 is our y-intercept, or again, because that's the key thing of um, standard form. So if you wanted to, you could put in a key point of 0, 084, which means that that is where, or that's the height, our stone is being thrown from. So again, not really required in this situation, but it is helpful because you never know what type of word problem you may come across, and maybe that is one of the questions. But because I'm looking for how far horizontally does the stone travel before it hits the water, I'm looking for this value down here, which is an x-intercept. So my goal is I need to find my solutions. So that means in this equation, I need to know when y equals 0, what does x equal? So looking at this right now, it's not a simple trinomial because of that negative value in front of the x squared. But because we're trying to solve this for when y equals 0, and I have it already set up as is, there's a little bit of an easier way that I can factor this. Rather than treating it as a complex trinomial, what I can do is I can factor out that negative 1 right off the bat. So if I factor out negative 1, because right, I want that x squared to be positive. So when I factor out that negative 1, basically all the signs change. I can now get rid of this negative 1 by dividing both sides by negative 1. Right, just simple algebra. Divide both sides by negative 1. One sides cancel out. 0 divided by negative 1 is still 0. So that's a nice way that I can kind of simplify my standard form to help me factor. Because now this is a simple trinomial. I'm looking for a product or two numbers that equal 80, negative 84 and two numbers that add to negative 5. So those factors, if you think about them, should get negative 12 and positive 7. And again, the reason negative 12 times 7 equals negative 84 negative 12 plus 7 equals negative 5 now that I have those two factors in my expression x is the first term minus 12 is one term and then x plus 7 so those are now my two factors now that I have my two factors I can set each equal to 0, so x minus 12 equals 0, x plus 7 equals 0. And so when I solve, x equals 12, x equals negative 7. So these are my two solutions. So going back up to my actual graph, that means I have an x-intercept at 12 and at negative 7. And you may think, well, negative 7 horizontal distance doesn't really make sense because I don't throw a rock negative horizontal distances. And that's true, but we have to keep in mind that just because we're not looking or referencing some values, that doesn't mean that our parabola doesn't extend in the other direction. So you're right that we may not even consider, let me just change this here. If I'm looking at this scenario, I may not consider anything on this side of the negative sign. Right? That's maybe all I'm concerned about is everything only in the positive direction. And that's true for the scenario, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exist. So you may come across solutions like this where you have two of them, but only one of them works in the context of the scenario. So that means when looking at this, negative 7 meters horizontal doesn't make sense. And then this one, 12 meters horizontally does make sense. 
So in this case, we only have one solution, at least in terms of our scenario. So in this case, the rock travels 12 meters. So negative 7 meters horizontally doesn't make sense, so we have to ignore that value. Again, in terms of this scenario, it's still a solution toward, for that quadratic, but in terms of the scenario and the context that we're looking at, we, we can ignore it because it doesn't make sense. The positive value in this case does make sense, and that's going to be our solution. Looking at the next example, a rectangle has dimensions of 3x plus 1 and 2x minus 5. Its area is 100, or sorry, 1,150 centimeters squared. What are the specific dimensions in centimeters? So if I'm looking at area, again, we may not know where to start, but let's start with just the general for area formula. Area equals length times width. I know my area is 1,150, and I know my length and width, in this case, are 2x minus 5 and 3x plus 1. I need to get this into standard form if I'm trying to solve for solutions. Because I'm trying to find the specific dimensions, I need to find what x equals. In order to do that, I need to get this into standard form. So I'm going to leave the 1150 alone right now. I'm going to expand or use my FOIL method on these two brackets. Because once I expand them, I can incorporate the 1150 and then I can put it into standard form and factor. So in this case I get 6x squared plus 2x minus 15x minus 5. If I want to bring this over I can so right at the end x squared plus 2x minus 15x minus 5 minus 1150. So 6x squared minus 13x plus, or not plus, sorry, minus 1,155. So now this is going to get complicated, but we can still do our best to work through it because I'm looking for now a product and sum. It's a complex trinomial, so I'm looking for two numbers that multiply to 6 times 6 times negative 1,155, which equals negative 6,930 and the sum has to equal negative 13. So we've got our work cut out for us because we have to find two factors then multiply to this number and add to this. So we're, we have quite a situation on our hands. So again, um, I know this one's a little bit more complicated so just kind of take your time and try to work out some factors. Promise that you that they're not always going to be this difficult um, so this one may take a little bit of trial and error, um, but I will definitely give you the solution. So again, this one, I'll be honest, had to use a little bit of photo math. Um, if I, I promise if I give you a number that's this ridiculous, I will allow you to use photo math to figure out the factors. Um, but like I said, in this example, it just tends to be, uh, I just pick bad numbers. Um, but you won't have to deal with anything this kind of ridiculous. But the two factors that we get are 77 and negative 90. So again, I don't expect you to have been able to figure this one out, 
Um, but as long as you understand what you had to do, then that's helpful, or that's kind of the goal. Once I find my two factors, I break up the middle term, so we get 6x squared minus 77x, or sorry, plus 77x minus 90x, because again, those two numbers come from here. And again, if we want to double check, 77 times negative 90 does equal negative 69, 30, and 77 minus 90 or plus negative 90 equals negative 13. So decomposition to break those up. Then after, I need to factor by grouping. So if I look at the first term, the only thing that's common between these two are x. So here we have 6x plus 77. If I look at the second term, I can factor out a negative 15. Again, our goal is to make sure that first term is positive. This one would be a little bit easier because I know I need to get 6 at the beginning. So you could basically figure out, okay, what multiplied by 6 gives me negative 90. In this case, it's negative 15. Uh, 1,155 divided by 15 equals positive 77. So again, that's good because our goal is to get two brackets that are the exact same and have our leftovers as well. So 0 equals 6x plus 77 is one bracket times x minus 15. Let me just move this over. So these are my two factors. And now again, because I'm trying to find the values of x, I need to set each bracket equal to 0. I need to set each bracket equal to 0, and I'm going to solve for x. So in this case, 6x equals negative 77. Divide both sides by 6 x equals negative 77 divided by 6. And on the other side, a lot simpler, x equals 15. So again, looking at this, right? because I'm looking at dimensions and length, right off the bat, I can already exclude one answer, which is this first one. I can exclude this negative. So negative length doesn't make sense. So that means, therefore, x equals 15 is going to be the solution that I'm looking at. And the very last step, because we're trying to find the actual dimensions, 2x minus 5 3x plus 1. I'm going to plug in 15 for both. So 2 times 15 minus 5 is 30 minus 5, or 25. And in the second one, 3 times 15 plus 1, 45 plus 1 is 46. So that means that my two dimensions, in this case, are 25 and 46. So again, I know this one was very was probably challenging because the numbers that we were dealing with were quite large. Um, but the nice thing is, um, once we factor it, this and we've, if we can get through the factoring, the steps to finding x um, are fairly straightforward. And then we take the reasonable answer or reasonable solution and plug it in to solve for the whatever the scenario happens to be. Um, so basically, again. Make sure you understand factoring, review factoring if necessary. Um, again, I promise that most of the questions, or if not all the questions, won't be this difficult as this one with these large numbers. But that being said, if they are, we will look at something in the next lesson that will make this a lot easier for solving.